Hi there, I'm Nafis Salatic and this is Across the Balkans. On the show today, we look at the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. The region has been hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic, but Serbia is leading efforts with one of the fastest vaccination rates in the world. With delays on vaccine arrivals from COVAX and the EU, Belgrade has found its own way with the help of some powerful friends. While besides inoculating its own citizens, Serbia has also been donating vaccines to its neighbors who are lagging behind. So how did Serbia manage to achieve this? Katarina Petrovic is in Belgrade to find out. I was vaccinated by, by Pfizer BioNTech. My sister today is going to be vaccinated with this AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. So, you know, it's it's like a market. I think that they don't know how the coronavirus can come to my heart. A little bit of liquid is, in a way, our pass through some freedom. Serbia has the second fastest rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine in Europe, just behind the UK. More than 20% of its population has already received the shot so far, and there isn't just one vaccine available. The government's giving out jabs developed by China's Sinopharm, Russia, Pfizer and Oxford AstraZeneca and people can actually choose which vaccine they would like to take. I'm now headed to the largest vaccination site in Belgrade to see how the whole process works. 36.2 this is the Belgrade Trade Fair, now the city's biggest vaccination center against COVID-19. On average, 8,000 people come here every day. Now we are in the sector for the so IT, where the citizens who have completed the formulary come and put them into the information system. The procedure to get a jab is simple. You register online, pick your vaccine of choice, and a few days later you get a call. Once you get here, you have a routine checkup in one of the 24 booths. I pokušamo da svaki sektor građani prođu što brže, dakle od ulaza do vakcinacije protekne negde između 6 i 8 minuta. Dobar dan. Dobar dan. Izvolite, uđite. Marko, vi danas primate prvu dozu AstraZeneca vakcine. Izvolite, sedite. Ova saglasnost ostaje meni. Potvrda je vaš dokaz da donesete na drugu dozu o kojoj ćete biti SMS porukom obavešteni za 12 nedelja. U čekaonici, molim vas, odmorite 15 minuta i tek onda napuštate halu. This may look like the typical process, but it's not. Serbia is the only country in Europe where people can actually choose what vaccine they get. Pfizer, Astra. It's so strange to think that like we've been for a year stuck in our homes and this little thing, tiny little bit of liquid is in a way our pass through some freedom. For the majority of people, coronavirus vaccines are considered safe. But millions around the world lack fully functioning immune systems and are at risk of being left behind. One of them is 19-year-old Matija. Once a promising basketball player, Matija had to stop because of a serious heart condition. Today he helps others become professional players. Sam otišao u bolnicu, bio sam na intenzivnoj i rekli su mi da teško mogu da nastavim. Ništa nisu mogli da uradi, da ću morati da idem na operaciju, odnosno da mi stave taj ICD pacemaker. Sigurno da u nekim trenutcima teško, jer ponovo ti na tim trenutcima gledaš kako neko drugi igra, a ti nisi u situaciji, a misliš fizički da bi mogao i dalje da igraš. A few months ago, Matija survived coronavirus. For immunocompromised people like him, COVID vaccines might be less effective and, if administered soon after an infection, experts warn it could cause a severe reaction. 
kad si dobio koronu, šta su ti i kad je krenula cijela ova situacija u stvari sa koronom, zbog tvojeg stanja sa srcem, šta su ti rekli doktori na koji način da se čuvaš i šta da radiš povodom u vezi sa vakcinom, da li da je uzimaš ili ne? Kad sam dobio koronu bilo je problematično i osjećao sam nekako i bol u grudima, možda je to da sam ja napravio sebi u glavi, ali sigurno bilo mi je problem i kad ustanem i ovako kad ležim, kao da osjećam da mi nešto pritiska. Oni nekako i nisu znali kako korona može da udiče na moje srce. Prvo i nisam dobio neki odgovor, nisu znali što odgovore, onda su samo rekli da bi trebao da sačekam, ni oni nisu sigurni, ni ti doktori čak možda ne bi primjeli vakcinu, jer nije ništa ispitao. Serbia has vaccinated 850,000 people in less than two months and it's been possible because of international help. China has supplied one million doses of the Sinopharm vaccine and just a few days ago, on Serbian president's birthday, Beijing sent an extra 500,000 doses. While the government says its vaccination program is a testament to its foreign policy, critics are concerned that China's COVID-19 vaccine diplomacy will come at a cost. I want to find out more. I was vaccinated by, by Pfizer-BioNTech. My mother was vaccinated by this uh, vaccine from China. My sister today is going to be vaccinated with this AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine. So, you know, it's, it's like a market. Serbian politicians say that the whole vaccination uh, process is a foreign policy success. What do you think about that? We are good friends with China, we are good friends with Russia, we are good friends with Brussels, we are good friends with Americans. Uh, in, in terms of, of, of pandemic, uh, it became very clear that uh, this approach was good. Is it a matter of uh, China targeting low, low to middle income countries uh, while other countries have taken the scoop of the more pricey vaccines, or is it something else? China has its own strategy. Is this something that is part of that strategy, these things with the vaccine? Probably yes. But do we need a vaccine as a citizens? Yes, we do need that. I don't care whether it's from uh, uh, China, Mars. from Russia, uh, from, uh, you know, wh whatever. This is not the question for, for ordinary people, you know. Ordinary people want to have protection. They don't want to be ill. They don't want to go to the uh, hospital, you know. They don't want to die. While Serbia is praised abroad, at home, the country is now struggling to contain more infectious strains. So far, only one million Serbians have signed up for a vaccine, leaving more than five million seemingly in no hurry. Doctors say that at least 80% of the population will need to be vaccinated to achieve herd immunity. And as health experts urge the government to impose another lockdown, I wonder, how close are we to being out of the woods? Katarina Petrovic, TRT World, Belgrade. My guest today is Mirsad Djerlek. He is the State Secretary at the Serbian Ministry of Health and also the President of the National Coordination Team for Immunization. He joins me now from uh, Belgrade. Uh, thanks so much, Mirsad, for joining us on Across the Balkans. We are going to discuss Serbia's vaccine rollout. Please, please uh, feel free to answer uh, in Serbian language. Now, uh, Serbia seems to be a real success story. How did you manage to vaccinate so many people so quickly? We've been preparing to start vaccinations since April and we've created an excellent system. First of all, thanks to our president Alexander Vucic, who launched bilateral negotiations with many countries in the world and used his authority and personal contacts, we first managed to get a sufficient number of vaccines, millions of doses, because without vaccines, we couldn't carry out mass immunization. Secondly, our well-designed healthcare system helped a lot. We included private healthcare facilities, emergency centers, secondary hospitals and clinics. An electronic IT system has also been created to invite all citizens to receive a jab. It schedules the exact date, time and location for vaccination. 
So every citizen gets a vaccine in about 10 to 15 minutes. It was organized in such a way that we haven't seen any problems. We've managed to vaccinate 60 to 70,000 citizens a day. Uh -huh. um, and what challenges do you still face with vaccinating uh, at the moment? Fortunately, we haven't had any major problems so far. People in Serbia have realized that the vaccine is the only way to fight and defeat the coronavirus. So, as far as any problems are concerned, we really don't have any. What will happen in the future? Given that we've vaccinated about 20% of Serbia's population so far, our goal is to reach some 50%. We believe that 30% of the people have already been infected. To gain herd immunity, 80% of the population should be exposed to the virus. And in that case, we can then say that we've defeated the coronavirus. We will see what happens next, but at the moment, we don't have any serious issues. Mm -hmm. uh, the Russian uh, vaccine seems very popular among Serbians. Are there any plans for the Sputnik V vaccine to be produced in Serbia? Speaking of Sputnik V, there's a lot of interest in this vaccine. However, I must say the Chinese Sinopharm vaccine is also very popular. We've already received millions of doses and have vaccinated 756,322 citizens with the Sinopharm vaccine. As for the production of Sputnik V in Serbia, it's quite certain that it will start. The Russian delegation visited Belgrade in February. We had a productive meeting with them and in about three months, we're expecting to start filling and packaging the Russian Sputnik V vaccine at the Institute for Vaccines and Serums in Belgrade. We'll get the mixture from Russia and pack it in Serbia and we expect the production of the vaccine to kick off by the end of the year after a production facility in Belgrade is built. How do you answer your critics who say Belgrade is becoming too close to Beijing? Uh, At the moment, our primary concern is the health of the citizens of Serbia. I don't think we should politicize such a difficult situation that has affected the whole of Europe and the whole world. We've already paid significant amounts of money to the European Union's COVAX system to get the vaccine, but to date, we haven't received a single shot. We had to rely on those personal contacts of President Vucic with Xi Jinping, Putin and other world leaders. So I don't see this as cozying up to China. It's a struggle for my people and for all those who live in Serbia. China has proven to be a great friend in terms of the procurement of respirators and protective equipment and even now in administering vaccines. So far we've received a million and a half doses of the good quality Chinese vaccine. What's your advice to other countries uh, in the Balkans who are uh, so behind when it comes to the vaccination rollout? As far as Serbia is concerned, we've always been two steps ahead in the fight against COVID-19, whether it comes to buying respirators or equipping hospitals. We've built two new COVID hospitals in four months with 1,500 intensive care units. The advice to our neighbors would be to start bilateral talks as soon as possible. Don't rely too much on the COVAX system, because I have to say the European Union hasn't shown the solidarity we all expected in the region. The rich bought the vaccine just for themselves. Still, it's about people's lives, and I think politicians should start using personal acquaintances. Serbia can be an example to many countries in Europe, countries that are much stronger financially. During this global economic and health crisis, we really tried to distribute a few thousand vaccines to all countries in the region, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro and North Macedonia. These are not large quantities, but we wanted to show that in such a difficult situation, one should show humanity and build friendship. Uh, Mirsa, thanks so much for your time for us here on Across the Balkans. I know you are very busy. I really appreciate uh, for your insight for us here on TRT World. 
As we heard, Serbia has inoculated more people than any other country in Europe, second only to the UK. But other Balkan nations are struggling to even get access to vaccines. Two months after the EU started its vaccination campaign, several countries in the Western Balkans have yet to begin. Here's why. Out of the 15 countries where COVID-19 has killed the most people per capita, a third are in the Balkans. That makes vaccinating in this region all the more urgent. All Western Balkan states had signed up to the EU joint procurement mechanism, as well as the World Health Organization's COVAX scheme, established to ensure equal access for all. But with unexplained and prolonged delays, many nations have gone without. Serbia forged its own path by making bilateral deals with Russia and China, and that paved the way for the country to become a success story. Serbia's vaccine rollout is fifth fastest in the world, only behind Israel, the UAE, the UK and the US, with more than 22 doses administered per 100 citizens, according to government figures. In contrast, North Macedonia, Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Kosovo are all lagging far behind the world average. I think it is the authorities' negligence that the vaccines have not yet reached the country. While everyone in Europe is getting vaccinated, we do not have a vaccine. I think this thing that happened to us is completely irresponsible, a great irresponsibility. Per capita, Montenegro has the most coronavirus cases in Europe, after Andorra. Serbia has donated vaccines to Montenegro and several other neighboring countries, including North Macedonia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, which have some of the world's highest COVID mortality rates. But in places like Kosovo and Bosnia, there's not just a health crisis, there's also a political one. Last week, Sarajevo received 10,000 doses of AstraZeneca's vaccine from Serbia. If only one of these five or 10,000 vaccinations saves one life of anyone in Bosnia and Herzegovina, then all of this is worth it. Then everything is worth it. Once again, thank you for this kind of help especially considering the situation in which we are in as a state. But Bosnia's foreign minister criticized the donation because the batch was made in India and therefore didn't have approval for use in the EU. Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic said they were only complaining because Serbia had sent them the vaccines. Meanwhile, Bosnia's Serb entity has acquired Russian Sputnik vaccines and hundreds of medical staff from Republika Srpska have crossed over to Serbia to receive shots. Serbia's relations with Bosnia and Kosovo have been strained since wars in the 1990s, when Belgrade backed Bosnia's Serbs in their bid to form their own state, and when Serbia refused to recognize Kosovo's independence. In December, President Vucic announced that his country would vaccinate Kosovo's ethnic Serbs. The plan was slammed as illegal by Kosovo's then Prime Minister, Abdullah Hoti and the country ordered an inquiry. The outrage from Pristina stopped Serbia from vaccinating Serbs inside Kosovo. But instead, Kosovar Serbs started crossing the border to receive the jab, while no one else in the rest of Kosovo was being vaccinated, not even medical workers on the pandemic's front line. For a region in the grip of a healthcare emergency, many seem to be suffering from symptoms of a more political nature, leaving many to wonder if geopolitics can ever be set aside for the sake of solidarity and survival. To get more on this issue, I'm joined by Adnan Huskic, political analyst. Uh, he is in Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina. For us, Adnan, thanks so much for your time. Uh, for us, Bosnia cannot even afford to vaccinate its frontline workers. Uh, what's the problem here? Well, I mean, you are unfortunately absolutely right. Um, right now, about two thirds of our population living in just one part of the country are almost entirely dependent on vaccine donations from uh, Serbia and announced donations from Slovenia uh, in the absence of, uh, uh, of any, any vaccines via COVAX mechanism. The other part, Republika Srpska purchased some vaccines, but the numbers are really symbolic. So yes, uh, uh, right now we cannot afford uh, vaccines for our frontline workers, which is a complete disaster. So the current situation is obviously uh, concerning. It impacts directly the health of Bosnian citizens. 
But does it also reveal once again the crisis of Bosnian governance? Well, unfortunately, uh, you know, many issues accumulated over the last two, two and a half decades. You know, this country suffers from uh, rampant corruption, nepotism, incompetence. Um, I would also say a lack of basic empathy on the part of political elites. There is a virtual absence of, of rule of law. And unfortunately, people are leaving this country, not just young and unemployed, are leaving this country in droves. So what adds to the complexity of this of this issue is that there are significant veto-wielding uh, forces in the country whose political aim is to show time and again that Bosnia cannot function as a country. And finally, there is this absence of, of, of red lines and limits uh, to what is really acceptable in, in politics and the political struggle. Because some people are opting for strengthening the state as a way out of this situation. Some people are refusing that on the basis of their political uh, agenda. So basically, we are in a way caught in a, in a whirlwind of, of problems in this country. The EU has set aside around $86 million for the Western Balkan region to purchase some of the vaccines in the future. Bosnia, in the meantime, is threatening to sue COVAX because of the delays. Now, would you say this system is favoring uh, richer countries in some way? Well, I mean, if you have uh, uh, if you have a look at the map of a vaccine rollout uh, uh, globally, you know that that be, then basically the answer is yes. Uh, uh, I think both the pandemic and the subsequent uh, uh, vaccine distribution has shown really the chronic absence of solidarity in the world and the system which is truly international. Um, in the sense, uh, we we saw the absence of this solidarity even within the European Union at the very beginning of the of the pandemic. So we are right now. Uh, in Bosnia being bombarded by contradictory information as to who actually failed, uh, whether it was COVAX or us. But in reality, those countries that acted quickly and uh, uh, unilaterally, those countries that have good international standing and connections, they managed to start immunization protests. And it's obviously not only the matter of uh, money alone, because uh, uh, vaccines don't cost fortune. That's why we have right. champions of immunization such as Serbia. You had, right, uh, I do uh, want to jump in here because uh, Serbia turned to China and to Russia and the rollout uh, is one of the best in Europe. We just discussed that uh, earlier in the show. So why didn't Bosnia do the same? I guess you can call it short-sightedness, really absence of vision. You know, we have decades of, of charity diplomacy and the culture of uh, somehow waiting for someone to come and do things uh, for us. And it's been 25 years since the end of the war. We have failed to... Uh, uh, we have failed to develop agency in international relations. We have failed to um, move ourselves from being solely the object of international relations into being a subject here. Serbia did all these things by the book, uh, uh, managed to secure enough of vaccines from all the different sources, used what I would what I would say is a beneficial geo political situation to its own benefit, something that I would like for Bosnia to happen, but somehow it just doesn't doesn't materialize. Uh, yeah, Serbia also delivered 10,000 vaccines to Bosnia. That made uh, quite a big headlines uh, in the region. What was the reaction to this among Bosnians? And can we expect a closer co cooperation among the Balkan countries in these moments of crisis? Well, I guess the, the reactions were, uh, I guess that people were on overall grateful for the donation because the donation will save lives. So no matter what we think about it, regardless of the numbers. And this is this is something that we have to that we have to recognize. Uh, some people called it the humiliation of, of our political elites because this was delivered personally by President Vucic and then it was met by the three members of presidency at the uh, at the airport. Uh, uh, but our internal, international humiliation is uh, has been been going on for more than two decades now, and this is only the cherry on, on, on top. Um, Serbian president, on the other hand, uh, uh, truly achieved a major foreign policy victory, improving his not only his country's uh, uh, standing, but also his own personal standing. Uh, let's not forget that uh, Serbia donated vaccines also to North Macedonia. So this is uh, uh, this is basically only showing uh, what is the position of each country in, in this geopolit small geopolitical game uh, in the region. Bosnia obviously has has failed miserably in, in almost all aspects. And the, the Western Balkans are seen as a possible future EU members. With the, with the EU failing to help uh, them now in crisis, is there a risk that countries may turn to other regional powers? Well, that's a very interesting question. You know, something that we've been discussing outside of the pandemic and, uh, and the vaccine rollout, uh, 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 something that's been in a way plaguing region for 
several years now, um, and we have uh, uh, we have a, a very com complex situation. On the one hand side, uh, I would say that our country is still pretty much oriented towards the European Union EU membership. Uh, we have, uh, or our economy, uh, converged with the uh, uh, with the European uh, uh, European economy. So you can you can see that the integration has already began. On the other side, uh, if you ask people, and this is something that's been done repeatedly, the polls indicate that the people actually see different actors as the most important international uh, actors in the region. So this only testifies to the, I would say, general uh, lack of PR on the, on the part of the EU in terms of selling itself as, as the major political actor on the, re, on the on the ground. But at the on the other side, the EU is not just failing in terms of in terms of PR. So yes, you are absolutely right in saying that people are talking about alternative actors. However, for the time being, uh, we don't see, or I at least cannot see any alternatives to EU uh, membership, regardless of this new initiative. What I see is, uh, uh, you know, from time to time, very intensive geopolitical clash uh, between the West and Russia, uh, between the West and, uh, 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 and not a unified West, we have to say that as well, and China, and sometimes even mentioning Turkey as, uh, as another alternative actor in the region. However, so far, far, nothing major has changed in terms of the general okay. foreign policy objective, which doesn't mean that this, this is something we should take for granted. Okay, Adnan Huskic, thanks so much for that, uh, for your time for us here on Across the Balkans. Hope to see you again. Thanks for watching this episode of Across the Balkans, the show dedicated to the people, places and stories of southeastern Europe. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.